this is Julie Hoag with Vegetarians and Meat Lovers Split Table Recipes. Welcome to my podcast. I'm really happy you're here. Happy summer in Minnesota right now. It's summer and it's been a hot June. Really hot. It's kind of been the July weather coming in June, which is great though because we had such a cold, long winter. I hope you're enjoying summer. And we're approaching the 4th of July. Don't forget to check out the amazing superhero swoop-in that Instacart is in your life. You can get something delivered to your house very easily. Check down in the podcast show notes for the deals where you can try Instacart for the first time. You may find that you absolutely love it. They'll bring something you need right to your house. So in this episode, we're talking about summer recipes, summer salads. And the first one I'm going to talk about is so fun for the 4th of July. It's an easy 4th of July dessert, red, white, and blue style. It's summer and 4th of July is coming up really quick. This is such a fun, yummy, unique fruit salad recipe for summer. We often throw a pool party for our friends on the 4th, and I like to add a red, white, and blue food some way to our party menu each year, but I want it to be easy because throwing a party is a lot of work. This is such an easy recipe, bomb pop fruit salad, and it is on my website. I'll put the link down in the podcast show notes so that you could easily print this recipe, but it also will be down in the podcast show notes if you just want to write it down. It's super easy, and it's really quite attractive looking. When you look at it in the bowl, it's just, it's really beautiful. It's the red, white, and blue, and it's so easy. All right, this is what it is. You don't have to do much. Seriously, it's super easy. Two cups of blueberries, two cups of strawberries cut up, and two cups of blackberries. And then you're going to need eight bomb pop popsicles cut up. Now, this one, obviously, since it's with popsicles, you have to really plan ahead how you're going to do it. And the way I do it is I usually get the fruit all ready, put that in the fridge, and then right before I'm going to serve it is when I chop up the popsicles. Because like with any popsicles, you need to eat them quickly. (laughs) They're going to start to melt. And it's not bad when they start to melt, though, because it coats the fruit and it's really good. But if you want to have those refreshing bites of popsicle alongside that fruit, you're going to want to serve it right away and eat it right away. It's not one of these you're going to put out on the the counter and people are going to come to get it. They need to eat it like now, (laughs) right when it comes out, especially if you're serving it outside, right? So instructions, obviously, just cut up the strawberries to make two cups to a large bowl. Add the two cups of strawberries, two cups of blueberries, and two cups of blackberries. Stir gently to mix so you don't break up those blueberries too much. And then cut up eight single bomba popsicles and add them to the bowl. Stir very gently to mix. You don't want to do too much mixing or you're going to start to chop up those popsicles and make them melt faster. But So serve it and eat it like immediately. And people will gobble this up. It is so good. And it's really, like I said, it's just a beautiful recipe. I mean, the the I'm looking on my website right now, the pictures, and I just love these pictures. The red, white, and blue is just such a pop. And then you add in those lighter blue popsicles and the white from the popsicle. It's so good. It's such a good combo. It's so simple. It's such a simple concept, but what a refreshing, it's almost like a dessert, right? Because it's got the popsicles in it and the fruit. So it is a salad. It's a fruit salad, but it's almost like a dessert, with all of those popsicles and fruit in there. It's just, it's super fun. And, you know, you could cut up the popsicles ahead of time if you want to make it easy for yourself. And then just make sure you put them back pretty swiftly because you don't want them to refreeze back into chunks. And I guess if they did, you could chop it up with like a spoon or a knife or something to get it back into pieces. But what a fun 4th of July berry bomb pop fruit salad. I've called it a couple of different things on my podcast or on my website. And oh, it's so good. I just love it. Looking at it, I'm like, I want to have this again. (laughs) It's so much fun. And for my second one, this is just such a really fun one too. It's a little bit more work because it has the jello in it. Okay. Easy, no bake dessert salad for 4th of July. And again, this is a red, white, and blue, and you're going to want to serve it pretty quickly. I have let it set out a little bit, but it does start to degrade. It's not one that's going to like be able to sit out for a long time and last, especially in the heat. But it's so good. It's really pretty. It's red, white, and blue again. And 
It's so easy. I love these recipes because they're super easy. They're super good. And they're very unique, like a red, white, and blue salad. You know, it's just super festive. You know, it's just, it's so much fun. Okay. What do you need for this one? You're going to make the jello. So you're going to need one and a fourth cups of boiling water, one package of blue gelatin, and four cups of strawberries cut up, and one cup of small marshmallows, and two cups of whipped topping. How do you make it? You prepare it by making the Jello Jiggler's recipe according to the package instructions, which is one and a half cups of boiling water to one six ounce package of Jello. Stir to dissolve, of course, follow the directions on the package. Jello is pretty easy to make, right? And you pour it into a loaf pan and let it sit in the fridge for three hours. That's the usual thing, is the three hour time, time frame. And while you're waiting for that to solidify, you can cut up your strawberries into bite-sized pieces to make four cups of strawberries. After at least three hours, scoop out the jello out of the loaf pan and loosen around the edges with a butter knife. And of course, you can lift it out with a spatula or however you want, but you're going to cut up that gelatin into bite-sized pieces or cubes. To a large bowl, you're going to add one cup small marshmallows and two cups whipped topping to, stra- to the strawberries and jello. Stir gently but thoroughly and serve immediately or refrigerate. You can refrigerate it for a little bit too. For best results, stir ingredients together just prior to serving because like I said, it does start to degrade with that whipped topping. But what a fun, super fun dessert. I mean, these are just so much fun. Jello is an amazing thing. Like you can do so much with Jello, especially if you want to do the red, white, and blue. There's another one that I have on my site. I'll put the links to these down in my, the podcast show notes too, so you can easily print them. But this one's really interesting too. This one, and you cut it, you can look through the jello. This is a layered jello recipe. It's so festive. And it's just really pretty. When you look through the side of it, you can see the, the light coming through the jello. It's just really pretty. What do you need for this one? This one, you need two tablespoons of caramel syrup, one half cup marshmallow cream, one half cup Cool Whip. Two and two thirds cup graham cracker crumbs, a half a cup of melted butter, and 18 ounces gelatin packets. You want two blue, 12 ounce berry blue, and one red, either six ounce cherry or strawberry, and three and three fourths cup water. Directions pretty easy again microwave one half cup butter with two tablespoons caramel syrup for about a minute. Stir and pour over the graham cracker crumbs. Stir the butter and caramel well to coat them. Spray a 9 by 13 inch pan with cooking spray. Press the cracker mixture into the bottom of the pan. Then you're going to place that pan in the freezer for about 40 minutes or so until it seems frozen. Meanwhile, you can be getting your jello ready. But you don't want to do this until right prior because you, well, you could. You just don't want it to start to solidify because you want to be able to pour it. Heat one and a fourth cup of water to boiling and mix in the six ounces packet of blue gelatin. Stir until dissolved. This is the best way to do it, to get the jello ready and then pull the pan from the freezer so it stays frozen. Cool the gelatin mixture in the fridge for about five minutes, though, before you pour over the graham cracker crust. Just pour that all on top of the graham cracker crust. And when it's frozen, it shouldn't, like, leak down too much into the crust. Set the pan in the freezer on a flat surface for about 45 minutes to an hour. And you're going to have a thin layer of jello, so it doesn't kind of take that a really long time. At least for me, it's been about 45 minutes to an hour. Then you heat, again, one and a fourth cups water to boiling. Mix the six ounce package of red gelatin, whether you have cherry, raspberry, or strawberry. Stir that gelatin packet until the water dissolves. Again, you're going to want to put that jello in the fridge for about five minutes to cool it down, and then you can remove the pan from the freezer. Then you're going to pour that red jello over the blue layer of gelatin, and then pop that pan back in the freezer in a flat surface, and let it sit there for about 45 minutes to an hour. So you need a fair amount of time with this. That's the, th- the thing. If you want to have these layers, this is how you have to do it. And again, you're going to get the next packet of jello ready after the hour or so. Heat one and a fourth cup of water to boiling. Mix a packet of blue gelatin and stir it well with the water until fully dissolved. Cool for about five minutes in the fridge again. And then you're going to pour that blue gelatin over the red and set it back in the freezer until frozen for about 45 minutes to an hour again. So that 
you want to do this in between each layer so that they can get, you know, solidified. And in the freezer, it does speed it up because normally in the fridge, you're not like three hours, but you want to wait three hours for every layer. <laughs> it would take you an entire day. Remove the pan from the freezer and make the topping using the marshmallow cream and Cool Whip. Blend them together with a hand mixture for about 20 seconds and then spread it across the bars with a spatula. Cut them into rectangular bars to make 30 bars. Store the bars in the fridge if they will not be served right away after being prepared. You can also pop them in the freezer for a short time until they are ready to serve, but it's best not to let them fully freeze. You don't really want them fully frozen. So you got to really watch that and, and don't forget about them. That's the thing. If you're having a party, you might forget about them in the freezer. And here's a tip. If you find that the gelatin layers are sliding around, score the gelatin layer with a fork to make fork lines to help maybe some of it stay put and give it a little bit of grip. Usually it's fine, but they occasionally have had that happen where they slide around a little bit. But then I figured out if you do those fork lines in it before you put down the next layer, it does help a little bit and it still retains the layers that you cut through. I mean, you don't want to like totally gouge it, but and handle it as little as possible to keep the stacked gelatin layers in place. And this is easier to eat with a fork, obviously, because you can pick it up. But if they're small, if they're cut small, I've, I've found that I could pick them up. But they're delicate, you know, I mean, they're just jello bars. So it's not like they're really solid, like a brownie or something like that. So those are my dessert recipes for 4th of July, red, white, and blue. So much fun. Do you have any plans for the 4th? We are going to have some friends over in the backyard. We have a pool, so it's really fun to have people over and swim and grill and eat and have a good old time. Usually we buy some fireworks. It's fun. Okay, now on to the summer salads. I made this dressing. It's so good. It's a cilantro lime salad dressing. I was inspired by some of the dressings I see in the stores that are cilantro lime. And I thought, I want to try making my own and see what happens. And it was so good. I just absolutely loved it. So this one, there's two recipes here, but I, I pair them together in my cookbook, which is One Dish, Two Diets, Recipes for the Hybrid, Vegetarian, and Meat-Eating Family. This is a side dish recipe because it uses that dressing. They both use this particular dressing. And so they're two different recipes, but they use the same dressing. So we'll start with the dressing ingredients. This is pretty easy to make, but you need one fourth cup olive oil, one teaspoon minced garlic, five tablespoons half and half creamer, one and a half tablespoons fresh squeezed lime juice. And I do tend to use the fresh. I mean, you could use the bottled, but one fourth cup apple cider vinegar, one fourth teaspoon ground red pepper, one and a half tablespoons chopped fresh cilantro, mounded, not flush. You want your tablespoon mounded. One tablespoon skim milk. I'm sure you could use other milks here too, like almond milks or soy milk or whatever, if you don't want to use dairy. And three teaspoons of sugar. This is pretty easy, right? What do you do? You just put it all together and you combine it and blend it with a hand blender for about a minute. And then whatever you're doing, you can store it in the fridge, of course. So if you're not quite ready to do your salad, I just pop it in the fridge and do the salad part and then you can add it. So this is so good. If you're going to do a lettuce salad with this dressing, this is the way I've made it in the past, and it's really quite good. One bag of sweet butter lettuce, one cup of raw carrot slices, one half cucumber, peeled and cut into small pieces, 15 to 20 mini sweet tomatoes. You could use the grape tomatoes or the cherry tomatoes. I, I really like the grape tomatoes. And five large slices of fresh mozzarella cut into pieces. Instructions. Pretty easy. You just combine all the vegetables together and pour the tangy homemade cilantro lime salad dressing over the salad. And you can do it in individual bowls or do one big one. Totally up to you. And another way I love to use this dressing is with cucumbers. And you make a cucumber salad. I like to add a bit of onion, one fourth cup diced onion. And use a fair amount of cucumbers for this, five cucumbers. You're going to peel those and slice them and cut them in half or in fourths, however big you want them to be. 
And then you're going to take three-fourths cup of the tangy homemade cilantro lime salad dressing and one teaspoon minced garlic. Combine all the ingredients and stir well to coat. And if you're going to serve it right away, cool. If not, put it in the fridge. It doesn't hurt it at all, especially being cucumbers. They can just kind of sit and, you know, kind of marinate in that that dressing. It's so good. It's so easy. And you can you do more dressing, of course, if you want. But for me, when I when I've done it, and I've got the five cucumbers. It seems to be enough to coat everything, but you can always add more. It's super easy. And the dressing does last in the fridge for a while. So just like any dressing, but it's kind of fun to make your own dressing. And what I like about it too, is you don't have those preservatives or anything weird in there. And if you don't want to use sugar, you could substitute like Splenda or something like that, or something other than sugar. If you want to avoid sugar, I get people that people want to avoid sugar these days. I often try to avoid sugar myself. My son has kind of gotten me more into that. And, you know, it's a nice way to save calories and still have it be sweet if you use something like Splenda. I'm a fan of Splenda. It's very fluffy if you've never used it before. But if, for me, it really, really still makes it taste amazing to use Splenda. I've never had any negative impacts from that. I've used it in banana bread and other places too. It's super light and fluffy. It's funny to work with. I want to make my banana bread with it and you stir it with a butter. It just looks, it makes a different consistency. But it, the taste is still amazing and it doesn't impact it negatively at all. So those are a couple of recipes that I love to use and so much fun to do these summer salads. Isn't it fun? I love these cucumber salads. They're so delicious and so good. I mean, you can go so many different places. And imagine using a couple of salads together. Like, you know, say you did this cucumber salad for a party or for dinner. And then your dessert was the bomb pop berry. How bomb pop berry berry fruit salad. How yummy is that? That's so good. And I'm going to round things out with an appetizer. And I'm not going to probably be able to fit all of these recipes down in the podcast show notes. There's probably not enough room, but I will put the ones I cannot put on here. I will put a link to get to my website. How about that? I think that'll be the best way to do this because they only give you so much room, unfortunately. I wish they gave us more room. I don't know why, why they can't give us more room, but they only give us a certain amount. I guess it's it's kind of odd though. Like when you have your own website, there's unlimited space. You can add as much as you want, but in a podcast show notes, you're limited. Okay. This is a meat appetizer, but you could make some without the meat in it. That's generally what I actually do because I want to eat some too. So <laughs> this is a hybrid vegetarian and pork, no grain jalapeno poppers. Great fun appetizer for the summertime. You need six to eight jalapeno peppers, one half cup shredded cheddar cheese, one half cup grated Parmesan cheese, and four ounces of cream cheese softened. You need two teaspoons of chia seeds, one teaspoon minced garlic, and one third cup small pieces of pre-cooked or grilled pork. This is where I like to use up those maybe leftover pork chops or pork roast that we grilled, and it's a great way to use leftovers, leftover meat, is to put them in an appetizer like this. Instacart. Groceries delivered in as little as one hour. Free delivery on your first order, $35. Save yourself that trip to the market. Instacart delivers groceries in as fast as one hour. They connect you with personal shoppers in your area to shop and deliver groceries from your favorite stores. Free delivery on your very first order over $35. Following the link in the show notes, let's Instacart know we sent you and help support our show. Multiple stores available. Shop all of your favorites on a single order. The products you love from your local stores. Hand selected by shoppers based on your preferences. Delivery to your door in as fast as one hour. Instacart highlights deals to help you save money. Don't we all want that? Find everything you usually buy and get smart suggestions for new items. Instacart picks the freshest produce and keeps your eggs safe too. Woohoo! Those are things I want. Try it out today. You will love it. 
You're going to preheat, preheat your oven to 350 degrees and set the cream cheese out on the counter to soften. Or you can microwave it for 15 seconds or so just to make it soft because you need to be able to stir it. And if it's a solid brick, you're not stirring, right? You're chopping and you want it to blend. So you want it to be soft. In a mixing bowl, you're going to combine one half cup shredded cheddar cheese, one half cup grated Parmesan cheese, four ounces of softened cream cheese, two teaspoons chia seeds, and one teaspoon minced garlic. Using a fork, press down to mash and mix the ingredients together. Stir until thoroughly combined. Oh, and I forgot to mention, this is from my cookbook as well, One Dish, Two Diets. If you're making both vegetarian and meat-containing poppers as desired, you're going to want to separate at this point. So you're going to take a portion of that cheese mixture and put it in a separate bowl. And then you're going to mix in your one-third cup of chopped up grilled pork. So then you're going to have the mixture of just cheese, which is meatless, and then you're going to have your bowl mixture with the pork. And you know, I think it's best to stir with a fork. I like stirring with a fork because you can mash it and stir at the same time. The spoon, you can mash, but it works better when you have the fork because the cheese can kind of go up through the tines as you push it down and then you can stir. So it just kind of mixes it better and mashes it better, in my opinion, than using a spoon. Okay, now your cheese fillings are ready. You're going to cut the stems off your jalapeno peppers and cut them in half and scoop out the seeds as desired. If you want more spice, leave them in, right? And then you're going to spray a cooking sheet with cooking spray and press the cheese mixture firmly into the jalapeno pepper halves to fill. Amount depends on your size of your pepper, so it's kind of hard for me to say how much. I like to kind of press it in there, fill it as you like. And I generally make about six to eight vegetarian poppers and six to eight meat-containing poppers, depending on who I'm serving and who's going to eat what, who wants meat, who doesn't. Then you're going to bake these little puppies at 350 degrees for 15 to 17 minutes. And then I tend to broil it on low for about two to four minutes after until the cheese turns a golden color. Really pretty, yummy golden color. Broiling just makes it a bit crispy, the cheese a bit crispy, and finishes up cooking the peppers. One of the things I found out when I'm making this is that sometimes, depending on your size of your peppers, you may have some cheese mixture left over. Mmm, yum. Hey, this is a bonus. If you have some cheese left over, it's really super good on crackers. Just like a, you know, a little cheese mixture spread. It's so good. And... What I like to do, if I do have some jalapeno peppers left, I also like to grind those up finely in a food processor and add them to the cheese. So then you've got a secondary recipe just from this. <laughs> Something that's really fun when you find out when you have extras. Like, what am I going to do with this? So then I mixed it in with the cheese, the, the chopped up jalapeno peppers, and it was a delicious spread. So you can do it with or without the peppers. But it's so good. It's a really good spread on crackers. So you've got yourself a cheese spread. So I guess I gave you more than one recipe here. <laughs> because if you just want to make a cheese spread, you've got the recipe just for that as well. That's really good. And the other way I've eaten it is with bagel or bagel crisps. So good. Toast a bagel and put it on there. Or those little bagel crisps are really good too. So good. What a great way to... Use up your leftovers if you have some cheese. And then it lasts in the fridge, too. I've kept it in the fridge afterwards and used it as a spread for several days, whatever I had left over. So it's very, very versatile, and you can use it in different ways. I hope you're having an amazing summer. I sure am. I'm really enjoying it, and I'm enjoying all the foods, the summer foods. We are flying through the watermelon. I don't know about you people, but my family eats so much watermelon. It's crazy. Last summer, I think I counted, we went through, I think it was eight watermelons. Like I buy a watermelon and it's gone in a couple days. And if my boys have friends over, my 13 year old just had a couple of friends over and I was cutting up a watermelon. The boys literally ate a half a watermelon in one sitting. I'm like, oh my gosh, I should buy two watermelons, right? <laughs> what a crazy thing. But what a great thing to be able to eat in the summer. It's Something that isn't like a ton of calories, but keeps you hydrated and it's delicious. So good. So good to have a bunch of melon 
chopped up and in your fridge, ready to go at all times. And so I find myself every time I'm going to the store every week, I'm getting another watermelon. And, you know, that's not a bad thing. (laughs) Not a bad thing at all, right? We got to use this watermelon when it's fresh. And it's a wonderful summertime thing. I am really excited. I have a new interview lined up. I'm going to tell you a little bit about her as a preview to get ready. Found her on Instagram. Often when I find people, I'm just scrolling around and I see someone and I'll just DM them and be like, hey, you want to come on my show? So her name is Mary Audette White, and she's a food blogger and a cookbook creator. She creates vintage Southern recipes and country comfort food. She's a best-selling author and food blogger from Texas. On Instagram, if you'd like to check her out, she's Mary, M-A-R-Y-E underscore, Restless Chipotle. I love that. Restless Chipotle, R E S T. L E S S Chipotle is G I can't talk. C H I P O T L E. And so her and I are going to chat this week and hopefully I'll get her interview live either this weekend, hopefully by this weekend. So I'm going to be kind of doing two right in a row. She has a website as well and it's the restlesschipotle.com. So she creates quick and easy recipes for Southern comfort food. Perfect. She's got hundreds of ideas for family-friendly comfort foods, decadent desserts, cozy breads, and more. I'm super excited to talk with her and see how, you know, her rest, her website looks great. She has tons of different things. So much fun to talk to people, especially I really love to talk to people who like to cook that are around the country. So like she's a Southern cook from Texas, which is very different from what I do. I'm way up in the North in Minnesota. So it's so fun to get that different perspective from different parts around the country. It's one of the things I love to do interviews with is talking to all these different people. And it's really just quite amazing to see how the differences are in the way we cook and the way we consume food. So It's really quite fun. If you have any chance to go back and listen to my other interviews on the podcast, I interviewed an Italian in my kitchen recently, Rosemary Malloy, and the pastry chef, Brianna Shaver, Brianna, I think she says Brianna, Brianna Shaver at the Garden Box Baking. So, so much fun. I love finding these chefs. Oh, and the other one I want to mention too is Dr. Yami, the plant-based pediatrician. She didn't give a whole lot of recipes, but she talked a lot about cooking and food. So check out all of those amazing interviews. And if you need something, don't forget to check out Instacart. Instacart is just so convenient. You can call them up and they'll deliver something to you. Just like that. Like say you're making something and, oh, I don't have enough of this. I don't have enough of that. Perfect. Just give them a call. Don't forget to check out Instacart down in the podcast show notes so that you could easily get something if you need it. If you forgot it, you ran out or you don't have enough. It's a great solution instead of having to hop in your car and go buy more. Very, very convenient. This was really fun to share these recipes with you, and I'm really excited to share more. Don't forget to check down in the podcast show notes for either the recipe or a link to the recipe, because as I said, they're not going to all fit. (laughs) They only give me a little bit of space, baby. That's all I get, apparently. They should give us unlimited space, right? I don't know why it's limited. I've always wondered why they only give you a little portion of space. Like, why put a limit on it, you know? (laughs) I've got to have some reason, right? Anyway, you have an amazing summer and an amazing 4th of July. I hope that you enjoy the recipes I've shared and have a wonderful, wonderful, amazing holiday. God bless America. Oh, yeah. Thanks for listening. Have a great day. Bye-bye.